picture of you no, or your machine, lady. No, no, I'm not taking a picture of your machine. I'm staying as far away from it as I can. Sir, sir, so can. Okay. <laughs> presidential advisor yet, but his rap has gained him entry to the Republican elite. More on this new insider from Chief Washington correspondent Bob Schieffer. If you're cool, you know the center of attention at Washington's National Airport last night was that hot new rapper Easy E, whose rap is a little, well... It's a little on the, on the dirty two-life crew side, but not quite to that extent. Not that, he's not like um, abusing women, but... Right. You know, he, yeah. it had a couple swear words in it. More than a couple, it turns out. I think I give a damn about a girl. I ain't a sucker. And his biggest hit is so controversial, the FBI protested. We couldn't broadcast it on a day. The name of the uh, record? The record. Yeah. The police. Which is why you might not have guessed that Easy E, Eric Wright is his real name, would be among this group of well-off Republicans who paid $1,250 to become members of something called the Republican Inner Circle who were waiting in line today to hear law and order man George Bush at a private members only reception. You would have been surprised because Easy es group is not exactly the voice of the establishment. What, what is your group now? NWA. And what does that stand for? Niggas with attitudes. So why was Easy e there? Mainly because he was invited. Like many Americans, he received a fundraising letter from Texas Senator Phil Graham inviting him to join the elite inner circle. For a thousand bucks, of course. 
In a follow-up note, Senate Republican leader Bob Dole pointed out his fellow members would include Arnold Schwarzenegger and George Schultz. Before the Republicans realized it was all a computer foul-up, Easy e just sent in the money and was made an official member. You think that uh, Senator Phil Graham and uh, the other members of the Republican inner circle know who Eric is and what he does? <laughs> no, no, I don't think so. I think that, that probably they would be shocked to find out who he really is. And, uh, but as for us, we're happy to be here. Whatever else all this means, Easy e says he thinks it's cool, and it does seem to underline one truth that applies to politicians of both parties these days. If you've got the money, they've got the time. Bob Schieffer, CBS News, just outside the inner circle. That's the CBS Evening News. We hope you'll stay tuned for America Tonight after your... Hey, everyone. Welcome to the 1804 Show, Chapter 2. I'm your host, Dollar Will, and this is... Another episode of 1804 History. Hit like, comment, subscribe to the channel, the 1804 Show, Chapter 2. Now let's begin. So today, I'm going to be talking about rapper Easy e Eric Wright. He was such a pioneer, such a influence on rap music. And he just was one of the smartest individuals in hip hop history because of the fact that he was the literally the first one to own a record label with Ruthless Records and revolutionized how we listen to music today. But everybody doesn't talk about his genius, his charismatic attitude and just the fact that he was able to undermine the United States government is completely priceless, <laughs> completely priceless. And the funniest thing is that they did not know his real name. And a lot of people don't know because the movie Straight Outta Compton didn't go into that. And I never really liked that movie. I know it's like nostalgia, but it, they didn't tell the whole truth about him. And kind of did some sucker shit with Death Row beating him up, which never happened. And saying that he would die broke, that never happened because he had Bone Thugs and Harmony. So he was never broke when he died. And Ruthless Records still stayed active for many years after that. So y'all can kill that noise. But just anything, I just really respect him as a businessman because he has so many different ideas. He was so ahead of his time. And what people don't know is that the United States government invited him to the White House because of the gangster rap. Back in the day, they were trying to band it. You know what I'm saying? Just politicians were trying to boycott it. And they had wars with Tom Warner Music saying that why you put out such violent lyrics and violent content and we want to ban. Because it was never a problem until it made it to the suburbs. And that's when it became an issue. That's when it became parental content advisory. And a lot of people don't know that. But they all basically invited all the rap executives to the White House to discuss. Well, not the executives, excuse me, but the owners, the labels, and stuff like that. So they didn't know that he owned Ruthless Records. And him, Jerry Heller, and a few other people went to the White House on March 18, 1991. And Eazy-E was a Republican. And 
they invited him to the Republican inner circle. And he sat next to President, the first George Bush. And they was pissed. They was really pissed and very embarrassed. Just how did he get in here? How did this go under our noses <laughs> type thing? So, but it's just a coincidence just how they wanted to eliminate just not just his company, but his music. They tarnished him in the media saying that he was responsible for a lot of murders and gang culture. But he said that I don't make music for that. I make music to depict our reality, what we go through in the streets. And that's what I think too. I just really think that people just want reality while everybody was just talking about fantasy back then and having a good time, but you got to depict the ugly side of things and the wrong side of things. And I just think that it just helped changes things just by depicting the truth, you know, the murders and police, racism, poverty, all that stuff. You know, you got to be honest. You got to just come to that leadership inside of you and just not giving people bullshit. You got to give people what they want. And rap music, yes, it has scores, bad, then good. But the good side of things was the fact that it was freedom of speech. Everybody had the choice to whether listen to it or not. But also it just was a way for a young black man to become millionaires, legitly, the right way. But it just comes a time that people just need to quit trying to create their own narratives. And so he stayed there for three days and he paid $4,000 to be a part of the committee. And again, they was pissed. They was really, truly embarrassed because how could you let this guy in here? <laughs> you know, type thing. Uh, well, we didn't know his name was Eric Wright. So my belief is that he was taken out on purpose because of that. That's what really made him like public enemy number one. They had to get rid of him after that. And it's just sad because he really was ahead of his time. Because you know the Beats by Dre thing, that was easy E idea, but he was coming out with speakers. This was before Bluetooth speakers ever was thought of, but he wanted to come out with his own speakers. He wanted to make movies. He wanted to sign kids, a whole bunch of stuff. But you know, once you're accepted in the suburbs or you get a wider audience, then you're a target, you're a problem. Because you're going to be influential, going to be a leader, and he was truly a leader. It's just he was also a rapper, but his business side of things were splendid. And the craziest thing that he really wanted to kill Suge Knight, <laughs> he really wanted to take Suge Knight out, but Jerry Heller, of course, talked him out of it. And they put that big old Rico lawsuit on Suge and Interscope Records and a whole bunch of people. But he was just a genius. Because he didn't do what other rappers did. He went to 
the head of the snake, you know, the ones that was accusing him of being detrimental to society, he actually went to the commander in chief and told them, like, how you gonna get mad at me? I didn't bring no guns or no drugs in the community. Y'all did. <laughs> so I'm going to put like a lot of footage in the video when I'm finished with it. But this is just the commentary right now. But I'm gonna put a, like a lot of footage in the final draft. But yeah, rest in peace to Easy E, Eric Wright Sr. and Thank you for your contributions to rap music, to the world. You're a true legend. You're the GOAT. And I'm out, y'all. Hit like, comment, subscribe to the channel, The 1804 Show, Chapter 2. Peace. And like by us being from the streets, we know how to report it. I tell, you know, basically what's going on. Easy e grew up on the mean streets of Compton, California. He's a gangster rap original with a long police rap sheet and a top 10 pop album. They say rap promotes violence and gangster rap does this and everything else. And I don't think gangster rap promotes violence at all. I think it's the person, you know. A song, a rap song doesn't make a person go out and shoot people or go out and rape people and everything else. I think it's the person. I have some lyrics here from some of the songs that you've done in your career. And to be very honest, many of this, much of this I can't even say on television. But I want to read some of this to you. Um, so what about the bitch that got shot? F her. You think I care about a bitch? I ain't a sucker. Right. Um, songs That's titled... That's not talking about women, though. What is it talking about? A lot about? of them bitches. It's a difference. I figure bitches. uh Someone that does like scandalous things to you. You have another. <laughs> you have another song called "Real Niggas." Why do you guys call yourself this word that has well, been? We so have. Funny? We didn't. We didn't give ourselves this name now. <laughs> but right now in society, you guys are calling yourself right. niggers a lot but more than. We didn't give ourselves that name. People have been calling us niggers for years, and so we carry that word. We right now the word is like saying homeboy. <laughs> Gangster rap is so controversial that some record companies are putting out two versions of gangsta music videos with and without guns because MTV won't air gratuitous violence. And some radio stations are now refusing to play violent rap songs. Gangster, he was in here like five years. You just got out of, you just got out of prison. Yeah, eight months. What were you in for? For well, an assault on another gang member. And I was inside a, uh, like a halfway house or youth home. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now you're a rapper? I'm a rapper, writer, a writer, a arranger, everything. So this music that is being so maligned is actually kind of giving you a purpose in life and something instructive it's to do. me the only, the only avenue I thought I had, you know. In a lot of songs and a lot of videos, you, you, they're featured um, young men with guns, that sort of thing. Young, any of you guys carry guns? Do you? Incriminate mm -hmm. ourselves on camera. No, no, never. no, we don't carry guns. We carry switch blades. with a smile. <laughs> I mean, really? Seriously, do you? Yeah, we carry guns? Yeah. No? So you guys don't? You feel like you don't have to? It's just the life that we live, you know? Mm -hmm. It's just where we stay, I mean, you never know what can happen. There's people dying every day that you know. You're going to continue making a lot of money off of this, do you think? Basically, as long as you got people that want to learn about all this, and they want to hear it, you know? As long as it's violence, it's going to be rap music, gangster rap music, or whatever.